What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Dudes and Belts Wrestling Chatcast here on Twitch. My name is Johnny Deathdrop, the host of this fine show. And boy, do we got a good one for you guys. Let's start with the normal crew here on the panel. On the top left, we have the one that lives way up there on the east coast of Maine, the inventor of the lighthouse grading system, the one and only Coaster Crusader, Brian Athern. What is going on, everybody? And we have a special guest. <laughs> on the top right, we have our resident asshole himself, the one and only Marky Pins. Oh, what's happening, everybody? I don't know about you boys, but there's like a chill been in the Discord the entire time for the last like 10, 15 minutes, man. Let's get this going. I got to warm back up over here. I'm not a big dude, so get cold easy. On the <laughs> bottom right, we have the one and only Sunday Night Savior, the other Jeff. Uh, it's October. We got we got Ronan here. It doesn't match up any better than that. Can't wait to get going. And yes, of course, we will have Triple I in about 45 minutes time. But let's introduce. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, boo. I know. But let's introduce our special guest. He is one of the longest tenured superstars on Rocky Mountain Pro. He is the Prince of Denver himself. The one and only Ronan. How's it going, Ronan? Oh, the pleasure's all yours, as always. All right, guys, as always, whenever we do interviews on this channel, we have the roundtable discussion with the dudes for them to ask their questions. And yes, we will institute our subscriber perk, where one of you lucky subscribers can hop into the Discord, jump into the uh, chat, and ask Ronan a question face-to-face. -face. Or if you don't want to do that, we can just... You, you guys can just post it in chat. Just make sure you highlight your message if you are too uh, spooked out of Ronan in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it, it got a little cooler in here, so just watch what you say to the man. <laughs> watch what you say. Oh, I'm dying to hear what Coastal has to say. I can tell you that. All right, Coastal. Why don't oh, we start, start with you? We're, we're going to start right off. Getting As right always. into it, guy. Well... Oh. <sighs> I don't know if I should ask this, but I guess I will ask the question first off, Ronan. Thank you very much for being on. We appreciate it. And um, I will ask the tough, difficult question at first. Can you give us an update on the status of Legion? I, uh, I really don't, don't know if I uh, want to talk about that right now. I'm... Right off the bat, you really got me in uh, not the best of moods. I appreciate that. Thanks, Coastal. Yeah, way to go. Okay, we can go to a next question. Marky, have you got a question? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for setting them up for me, big guy. Nice and smooth. Nice transition right there. Mm -hmm. Excellent segue once Good again. Question. What's yours? Ronan, thanks for coming on the show, bud. Um, so we are spooky season here. It's Halloween season on the way up. Nothing screams spooky season in RMP more than Ronan right now. Shocktober's coming up. And as of right now, you're not on the card. I want to know, what's Ronan going to do on this card? Do you have an idea? Is there something you want to share with us that's going to get you involved in this show? Because it's not a spooky season without Ronan on my TV at all. Well, you're definitely not wrong there. Right. As of late, I'm really not quite sure what's going on. I have somewhat said my piece as of the most recent tapings at Rocky Mountain Pro Charged, but I'm going to put it to you this way. Overlooked, underutilized, and unappreciated. That is how the powers that be of Rocky Mountain Pro are making me feel these days. And uh, a man can only take so much. Exactly, Echo. And I know I'm a, I'm a bit of a glutton for punishment, both giving and receiving it. But if I don't, uh, if I don't get what someone of my stature deserves, well. We all know what uh, tends to happen on Devil's Night now, don't we? Do not tempt the devil on the Devil's Night. <laughs> Do not. All Sunday, right. why don't you go right ahead, big guy? All right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I'm going to go a little more softball on this one. Uh, <laughs> so, Ronan, in, in your time in RMP, uh, throughout all the years, who would you say is your favorite opponent? Who who do you think you, whether it's the person you just gel in the ring with, whether it's the person you just like beating up the most, you know, whoever it is, who would you say when you see, you know, they, they put out the card, they see your, his name next to yours, you you get excited about? Oh, wow, finally, a, a good question that uh, doesn't have a little needle stick to go with it. Yeah, you guys are really starting uh, off on the wrong foot here. I gotta say, definitely one of my favorite opponents of all time would have to be Danger Dean. He is someone who has certainly put me to my limit. I mean, him and I have faced off several times in the past, including Rocky Mountain Pro's very first casket match. Uh, that very same casket, of course, is out of my living room right now. <laughs> but uh, I'd say aside from him, as far as current talent goes, I certainly would have to tip my cap to Balaam Lynx, a young man who's got all the potential in the world. That really says something. If you can get a win over me more than once... That definitely shows that there's potential there. So I think time will tell is to see just how far he goes in this world. Agreed. Yeah, you seemed very interested in him going back a few months, almost to the point of propositioning him to join the Legion. So, and, and we've looked at him many, many times and said that, the, you know, there's a big future with this young man. Anything still in the works potentially for the future, or are you letting him go his own path? Well, for the time being, I am kind of letting him go off on his own, do what he needs to do, make the mistakes that he needs to make because there's nobody to teach him better. But, as I've always said, the door is never fully closed. You want to come in, you want to go out, it's all your decision. Maybe one day he's going to hit that wall, that roadblock, that so many have and need somebody who's been around a long time, somebody who has seen and heard and done it all to teach him the right way. But it all depends on how long it takes for him to hit that wall. <laughs> Coastal, do you dare ask him another sh a needle driven question? This one is no. And, and my apologies for the first question. Let's um let's talk about new gold in RMP. We have now seen the I guess redebut if you'll call it of the NRW Championship. Does Ronan have his eyes on some gold of NRW? As we now know that these uh, stipulation matches kind of perhaps right up your alley in some instances. Well, that is always a possibility. Well, when it comes to specialty matches, like the ones that I have heard are going to be highlighted as a part of the NRW Championship, <laughs> there's always a possibility that one of those little stipulations may be something that just works in my favor. But that all depends. I still have to, uh, I still have to deal with Shocktober and figure out just what I'm going to do and who I'm going to do it to. And then I'll go from there. Well, let's let's hope you don't have to force anyone's hand at that championship committee to get yourself into that card, because we, we certainly wouldn't want any unfortunate accidents to happen, as we've seen. They can happen in the backstage area sometimes. That's very true. Workplace accidents are very common in, in our world, so everyone needs to be that much more careful. Very true. Marky? Yeah. <laughs> so, in your years of being with Black Mountain and just being a professional wrestler in general, um, who have been some of the people that you've kind of grabbed by the horns, by the wings, and kind of shown the right way? Like, who's who have you mentored? And and is that paying anything forward from anybody that, like, mentored you when you were on the way up? Like, do you feel as though now you've been there for a while? that you want to give something back to some of these guys, maybe behind the scenes or a little bit of a, a like a tidbit of information somewhere or something to that effect. 
or is it still is it is it about you one way or the other at the end of the day it is always about the prince but still i have to give in order to get that's how it works even in my world and uh i think i definitely have given you take a look at lilith grim you look how much she has progressed since she has sat at my table, you take a look at what she is doing outside of Colorado, all the places that she's been traveling, and all the people that she has hurt, and the championships that she has won and are going to win. I like to think that my tutelage definitely speaks for itself in her actions. She was exactly the person who I was thinking of, too, when I was asking that question, because it is noticeable how far she's come since she's been with you and taking notes from you and, and just listening and watching you and such things like that. Has, has there been anybody else? Well, Brumach, he is also coming along. Unfortunately, he still has that, that raw anger, that frustration that often sinks in when you feel yourself falling behind, if you feel yourself not being able to catch up, and sometimes that anger, it can get the best of you, and it unfortunately has gotten the best of him more times than I'd like him to. He may not be picking it up as well as Lilith Grimm, but I think it's only a matter of time before everything clicks, and he finally gets what he deserves. Yeah. What are your opinions on Abatu in that same sense? Because we've now talked about two of the other three. Abatu, he is an enigma even to someone like me. Trying to get through to him is not always easy because we, uh, I'll just say we don't speak the same language is quite the understatement. But... I have to motivate him in uh, in other ways. And sometimes he gets the point, and sometimes he doesn't. So him, I may have to, I may have to do something different with him. We do have a message out there from Echo. He says, just throwing it out there, I know a certain title that's held by a certain mockingbird who takes on any challenges. Just saying. Oh, yes. I'll give Echo his due. He has certainly come quite a ways from hanging out with those those manufactured freaks in the Three Ring Circus and the uh, Walmart Pee Wee Herman. But, uh... <laughs> I think I just may have to take him up on that offer one of these days. I almost just spit my drink out there. I know. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. That's a good line. I like that one. I like I, that. I, <laughs> if it's okay with you, Ronan, I'm going to steal that. The, the Walmart BB Herman. Is that okay? Go right ahead. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All Walmart right, Sunday, go right Walmart. ahead. Fucking beautiful. So my question kind of goes back Jed, to... Jed, hold on to your questions to, for the second you know, half. When you got yourself into the pro wrestling world, who who was your, like, you know, who who was, like, the, kind of the motivation? Who did you look up to to kind of make you want to become a pro wrestler? There were a number of people. I'd say my first inspiration had to have been Brett the Hitman Hearts. I watched him and... Seeing the change in the product as the years went on, you went from these larger-than-life characters like Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate Warrior, and so on and so on, but then you started to see guys like the British Bulldogs, like the Hart Foundation, and it made me realize I didn't have to be six foot whatever, chock full of muscles, needles in my backside to be a star. I could be the smaller guy that I am. I was never going to be a big muscular body type guy, but I knew I still had something to offer. And seeing guys like Bret Hart, like Chris Benoit, like Eddie Guerrero, so many other names I could mention that made me realize just 
my size was not a detractor. All I had to do was figure out how to make my size simply work for me. So he was probably the biggest inspiration as a professional wrestler, but as a well, as a person, I think it's fairly obvious. Gangrel is also a huge influence for me because he made me realize I didn't have to be something that I'm not. I didn't have to try to be somebody else. I didn't have to be another carbon copy of somebody who's already made their name. All I had to do was go out and be who I was, be the person that I was born as, and I would achieve some kind of success. And for better or worse, I like to think I've done that. Aside from professional wrestling, I've worked in film, I've worked in theater, all because of wrestling. I, I can't really, uh, I can't deny the things that professional wrestling has done for me, even outside of the ring itself. So, I, uh, no, I, I like to think Gangrel definitely was a huge influence on me, and because of him, I was able to be who I was. I didn't have to pretend. And I'm relatively satisfied. Uh, um, when I asked that question, Gangrel was, was an answer I was somewhat expecting to get there, just for the obvious uh, similarities. All right, I have one for you, and it's one that I ask every interview. Um, you talk about your faves, and you talk about the wrestlers that who you look who you look up to. Um, what would be your four horsemen of professional wrestling? I mean, f four horsemen. Well, kind of, yeah, yeah, in a way. Mount, yeah, yeah, close yeah. enough. <laughs> Mount Rushmore. I think that's an appropriate term given it's Ronin. Sure. Instead of Mount Rushmore, who's the four horsemen? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. I'd say one that would have to be on the list is Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, I love great, that. Great, oh, great, 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 great worker in the ring, but when it comes to his knowledge of psychology, the way that he would speak, he didn't have to yell and scream like so many other men of his era or any other era that came after it that still tried to do that. He was very direct. He was very methodical. You knew, you could see the wheels turning in his head. Every time that he had this brief pause, this glimmer in his eye, you knew that he was pulling from this massive library in his mind, and you knew you were gonna get gold Every time that he opened his mouth, he could make you smile, he could make you cry, he could make you run for your life. And I really don't think there's anybody that was a better a better man on the mic than Jake Roberts. As far as in the ring, pure tech pure technical wrestling. I would I do want to put Brett in there, obviously, because he has such a huge influence on me. But I'd also have to put in Chris Benoit. Like Benoit had an intensity and a ferocity that made up for his other shortcomings. Again, he was not a huge guy. He wasn't the best talker. He wasn't very verbally adept. But he was able to speak through his actions, through his matches. Every move, every hold, every strike, it said something. He was able to tell a story without speaking a word, which... You really don't see a whole lot these days. There are a lot, a lot of young guys coming up that have all the potential in the world, but I think, for better or worse, Benoit is something that you do aspire to as a professional wrestler, as an in-ring competitor. And for the fourth... Hmm. I think for the fourth, I'd honestly would have to put in Sensational Sherry. Just to, to oh. round things up, because mm. Sensational Sherry, one of the greatest managers of all time, without a doubt, but also an incredible wrestler in her own right. Former AWA Women's Champion, former WWF Women's Champion. The way that she would take a young talent under her wing, like Shawn Michaels, and build him into the star that he became, and among so many others, whether it's Harlem Heat, whether it was the Macho King, 
so many people that learn from her, so many people that she was able to elevate with her own presence and give that to the person that she was managing, the person she was mentoring. Someone like that, as far as you know, female managers, managers alone in professional wrestling nowadays, it's not what it used to be, but someone like her, I don't think we'll ever really see again. That's a very unique list. I, I love yeah. Jake the Snake. I love Sensational Sherry on there for yeah. the contributions and things that they did. Mm -hmm. I never always thought that Jake never got enough credit for his vocabulary, the way he could speak. You know, we've all we all remember the idea of, you know, that he spoke very softly and he made you like lean in and listen and really hear what he said. But I don't think he got enough credit for the vocabulary that he had. He was a very, very smart man. And his that his was. psychological his psychological IQ was probably even higher. I don't think oh, he ever got enough credit for that. Jake speaking like that while everybody else around him is yelling makes him stand out even more. Everybody really yells good. trying to stand out. But you just sound like everybody else. But when he's talking like that, he lean in. another guy that was kind of like that is like an Arn Anderson. You know, Ric Flair is screaming and yelling next to him, then Arn gets the microphone and just talks slowly and concisely. So, it's a similar idea. Absolutely, Arn Anderson is another incredible, like, incredible talker. I, I think he, I think he, even more so than Ric Flair, he was really the, he was the one that you truly paid attention to. Ric Flair, he may have been, been the flashy one, the yelling, the screaming, the wooing, and all this, but Arn Anderson, he was every bit his moniker of an enforcer, both in the ring and on the mic, as, as truly the spokesman for the four horsemen. Yep. I, I, I personally, you know, as a fan, is, is I think Arn Anderson might be the most overrate, underrated wrestler in history for what he was and if he didn't have Ric Flair right there, he could have been, like, the man, because he had everything you wanted to have other than that, like, big bodybuilder look. Absolutely. I mean, if he was on his own, I could certainly see him as as, as a world champion. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. All right, Coastal. Start it back up with you. You have been in the business a long time now. You still have many great years to come. Who is a dream opponent of yours? Hmm. Well, that's actually a good one. Uh, I'm not quite sure how many years I've got because I still have a city to run. I have a community to keep together. Well, when the show is over, my work is not done. So it's getting quite tiresome. The drama that I have to deal with in both worlds it's enough to make make you almost tear your hair out, but heavy is the head. Yeah, you're not kidding. That would explain well. That would partially explain all of my the neck problems that I have these days. But uh, I like to think I definitely do still have something to contribute, considering that out on my mantle there is one championship that is absent. So pretty sure I've still got a little ways to go before I sleep. But uh, I'd say one of my dream matches, well, I guess you can consider it a, a dream rematch, would be Joey Janela. Him, him and I go back a long way, back to when he first started professional wrestling. I had him in his first match. And to see how he's come along, to see what he has become through nothing more than his own motivation, his drive and determination, it does make me quite proud, you know, one Jersey boy to another to see how far he's come. And before I go back into the coffin for the last time, I uh, I definitely wouldn't mind tangling with him one more time. Cool. Very cool. Marky Pitts, so, you're on deck. Yes, I mean, you're up. I'm up. So the Sunday Night Savior a little while ago asked you who your favorite opponent was. I want to ask you, who is your favorite opponent or person that you've had that you just can't stand? You cannot wait to get in the ring. You've had rivalries with a person. Who is somebody that has stuck out as somebody just been a thorn in your side, won't go away? Who has just been that, that guy for you? 
Everybody has that one person, whether in life or in professional, that just won't go away and they're just always a thorn in the side. Who is that guy to Ronan? Well, I almost want to say Stephen Ashburn was quite the thorn. But the uh, fact of the matter is, he was nothing but a puppet. And we all know who was pulling his strings. And that's why the one person who I would just love to get my hands on one of these days for nothing more than my own closure would be Titus Machiavelli because he has been a constant roadblock. If it wasn't for him, the history books of Rocky Mountain Pro would be very, very different because he said it before, and I'm sure he's said it plenty of times since then, that I am the one person that he is scared of. I'm the one person that he cannot control. And me, at the top of the Rocky Mountain Pro, with that championship around my waist where it belonged on that night, <laughs> who knows just where we would all be right now. But I think Titus coming back to Rocky Mountain Pro, I think it was for a reason. What that reason was, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. There's a lot of people that seem to have, at least lately anyway, who seem to have their own ideas about why Titus has been back and why the sudden change of situations recently. Uh, we did watch that match not long ago, uh, the match that you had with Stephen Ashburn a long time ago. Never and, broken, uh, I believe. Yes. We did watch that not too long ago, and there has been many times that he has spoken about you in, you know, other tones. So it sounds like the rivalry goes both ways in this particular situation. But there have been many, many people who have been questioning Titus's motives lately as well. And like, I think, like you say, we have to just wait a little while and see what's going on here for real here. Because he's been a very good friend of the show. One that sees it. It's so nice that finally, it, it's a story of my life. You know, I I see things that other people don't because I'm not so easily swayed. I was raised to believe half of what you see and none of what you hear and think for yourself, which is something that not a lot of people really subscribe to these days. And as much as it as it does please me, to see other people realize what I knew about Titus all those years ago. It's also equally frustrating because nobody came to my defense. Nobody spoke up for me. Did I get any kind of a rematch? Did I get any type of redemption? No. But what goes around comes around. So uh, when it comes, I hope everybody's ready. <laughs> Sunday. So I'm kind of just gonna like reach into into chat here. J Jet asked the question, and I know uh, instead of letting him actually verbally ask it and screw it all up, I'll kind of word it out properly and ask it the right way. Ronan, if if you had somebody trying to get into the the wrestling business right now, what would be the best advice to give somebody that's just breaking into the business? Well, my uh, my gut instinct says don't because this is the ultimate dysfunctional relationship it's all take and no give so you have to be prepared to give and give and give and get nothing in return short of a promise but i don't want to discourage people because everybody has their dreams just like i did so Really, the best advice that I can give is be prepared for criticism, be prepared for disappointments, but also be prepared when those big moments are, 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 just be prepared when they are presented to you. 
Sorry, I'm getting a little bit uh, frustrated here because I feel like I, well, I wish somebody had th had given me this advice so many years ago, but unfortunately, as always in life, I've done things on my own and I've had to learn things the hard way and a little bit longer than I'd like. So I really would like to let anybody who wants to be a professional wrestler know, go for it. Give it a try. I've seen people come. I've seen people go. But they at least gave it a shot. That's a lot better than saying, I wish I could have. Instead of, I gave it a try and I couldn't do it. So get in there, see how it feels, and see how far you think you can go. And just let things take their course. Well said. Good advice. It's very good advice. All good advice, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think so, that advice could be used for a lot of different things. Is you know, you, it's it's a little bit of that you can't win if you don't play type type advice. That's very true. Mm. Also, we know about the issues with Titus and what's going and what happened in the past with your shot at the belt. I think. Honestly, I, I do think you deserve another shot, be it against, you know, Dustin, who it is right now, or Balaam after October, as we know, that match is set. Is there a preference on which one of those two you would like to face for the ultimate prize? Well, that's uh, it's kind of a tough call. Balaam, I know some of his tricks. He's... Uh... He's tangled it up with me a couple times. I know a few of his mannerisms, a few of his little tics. So it's very well possible that if I were to step in the ring with him with that championship on the line, I know him well enough that it is very well possible that I could finally get what I deserve. But on the other hand, Dustin Yurick, him and I go back quite a ways ever since I moved out here to Colorado. But to the best of uh, what's left of my memory, I don't think him and I have ever tangled one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, that's quite the uh, interesting notion that we may watch each other. We may study each other's matches as much as we want, it's not quite the same as actually being in there locking horns. So us going face to face for a pretty sure the first time ever with Colorado's top prize on the line, not really knowing what either of us is capable of, <laughs> that's something that even I'd pay to see. <laughs> That's unique. If you guys have never tangled one-on-one, yeah. -on -one, wow. that's surprising. But to be able to do it at some point in time for the RMP Championship for the first time ever, you're absolutely right. I would pay money to see that. Mm -hmm. Marky. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Only because his name was brought up, I have to ask somebody who is there, somebody who has seen him be back. One Stephen Ashburn has made his way back to Rocky Mountain Pro and has been raising hell. Coastal, what's your line for one Stephen Ashburn? He's the answer to the question no one asked. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what has it been like backstage? We have seen him messing with Curtis Cole, Yaden, and Tag Dudes big time. We've seen him run in, interfere in matches and stuff. Has he also, has that level of just what he is, has that permeated a locker room to the point where people are ready to just throw him out? Like, like tar and feather room, things like that. Like, has he changed locker room culture there? Because he sure as hell has changed TV culture on this side of the screen when we watch. Has it done the same thing in the back? And where you know him so very well, I would figure that... If anybody would have the opinion that I want to hear the answer to from this side, it would be you. Well, to be honest, I really haven't uh, haven't paid too much attention to him since he's been back because I've got my own 
my own things to handle. I've got my own house to try to keep under control. My children need to learn and I need to teach them. I really don't have time to be paying attention to somebody who left and then just decided to come on back while I stuck it out here year after year. I've got my own problems to deal with. And as long as he, as long as he doesn't make the decision to once again be a problem of mine, I say a salute, good for him. Sunday. So uh, my question is going to kind of have a little bit of what you talked about on the, the previous question of th this one. Um, you mentioned how like you haven't faced Dustin before, and that would be kind of interesting. So outside of Dustin, uh, who is somebody that you haven't yet tangled with that you would like to? Whether it's somebody currently in RMP, somebody in, along your travels, along your way, who's somebody that like you've crossed paths with, pat crossed paths with, but have never actually tangled. Let's see. Well, Echo decided to kind of voice himself earlier, and I would definitely put him on that list. You know, young kid, guy. Funny, I'm sure I'd definitely like to see what, what he actually is capable of when he's actually in the ring with me and I'm not just sitting in the back when watching his matches. So I definitely look forward to tangling with him at some point down the road. Uh, as far as anybody else, well, they're just going to have to work a little bit harder to get noticed by me. <laughs> Fair enough. Love that answer. Yes. I like that a lot. Rounding it back again to Coastal. I know that we're going to have oh. a handful more questions once Triple I comes on, too. So. Oh, God. I can only imagine what Alphabet Soup has to say. Yeah, I know. <laughs> please, please don't. Please just don't put a curse on him. Just to, well, actually, <laughs> do. Actually, do. If, if it makes him talk it. less, we're okay with it. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be weird to see Triple I with no mouth. For some reason, I feel like Ronan could do that. Oh, like Neo in the Matrix? Yeah. Yeah, like one of those things. Probably should have picked my first question a lot better than after thinking of that. Yeah, probably. Anyway, yeah. Uh, so we've talked a lot tonight about your time in RMP. Is there anywhere else the Prince of Denver would like to travel? and spread the good word of the wrestling world? Well, as far as traveling goes, being that I've got so many responsibilities outside of professional wrestling to take care of in my own city, I'm pretty sure that for the most part, my traveling days are just about behind me. I've had my fun. I've struggled out on the road and been away from... You know, the people that I care about. And as much as I have enjoyed it, there are a lot of things I missed out on that I'll never be able to make up for. So I really don't know if I, even, even someone like me, even, even I've got a heart as black as it is. And I'm pretty satisfied with finishing up my legacy right here in my city. And then just calling it a life. Although, it will be nice to go back home at least once. Be able to, you know, see, show everybody, the few people that may remember me, just how far I've come along and how different I am from when I left. Maggie? We will do change over the course of time. Our environment changes us. Our choices change us. If you had to go back and make the choice to become a professional wrestler again, knowing what you know now, would you? When you chose to begin and when you chose to start and say, I want to give this a shot, let's take your knowledge now, put it back into a younger yourself. Would you still do it? You know, so that's something that I've... Uh... I've been asking myself that a lot lately. And again, I have Rocky Mountain Pro to blame for that. The championship committee and everybody who runs who runs the show treating me the way that they have, combined with a lot of other things that have gone on in my life 
as a result of professional wrestling. There have been some times where I've asked myself that question, and the first thing out of my own mouth was no. I would simply go off, I'd live my life, maybe explore some of the other things that I always had an interest in, the other passions I've had. But at the same time, a lot of the other things that I've done in my life, working in theater, working in feature films, are, as I said previously, because of professional wrestling. So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a double-edged sword. If it wasn't for professional wrestling, I wouldn't have a lot of the aches, the pains, the scars that I have to live with for the rest of my life. But at the same time, Without professional wrestling, there's a lot of people that I wouldn't have met. There's a lot of people that... There's a lot of people that <laughs> wouldn't have met me. <laughs> just a dip, in, dip back into my ego there for just a moment. And uh, there's a lot of experiences that I wouldn't have had because of wrestling. So, of course, you can't go back in time, and you can speculate all you want. You can say, I would do it all again if I could. I wouldn't. We'll never really know until, until you get ready for that next trip. Next life comes around. Sometimes you wonder if maybe you remember things from the ones before. So I guess I'll find out whenever that happens, but by and large, I really... Uh, I don't have too many regrets. Sunday. So, I know you have a lot of interest in things that take up a lot of your time outside of the wrestling business. But what what are some things you like to do when you do have a little bit of your own time to to something you enjoy? So you're you know whether it's certain movies, video games, whatever it is. Is there something like that that, that Ronan likes to do just to kind of relax and, and, and take his mind off things? Well, there are a number of you know, di different things outside hobbies that, uh, that I do like to fill my time, not so much pass it, uh, some of which I'm sure are not suitable for maybe some of the, the younger listeners. Even some of the older ones who were uh, quite vanilla. So I'd say one of my favorite things to do um, is write. I've been writing on and off so many different things ever since I was young. Back when you had to write on actual typewriters or pen and paper. No computers, no cloud storage. Just a very loud clack, clack, clack for yep. hours on end. Yep. And it's just something I've always had a flair for, something I've always enjoyed. Uh, another one of my passions is cooking. In my family, pretty important. You know, you, you don't learn how to cook. It's just something that you, especially in my family, you're simply born with. And you, you pick it up, you grow up in the kitchen like I did. And uh, when it comes to cooking... The talents that you learn in the kitchen are quite useful in uh, other aspects of your life. I'm not going to really go into details because that is something that you're definitely going to have to pay for to learn that. <laughs> Grew up very, very Italian. I understand exactly what you mean, good sir. I spent many an hour in the kitchen with my grandmother, my aunt, my mother. You learn a lot of life lessons while you're peeling well, potatoes and stirring tomato sauce. Yes, you do. All right, I guess I should ask Very this. Cool. I guess I should ask this question myself considering the situation. Um you recently had yeah, stop it coastal. You what? recently had a uh run in with one Damon Ace at Milestone. And I'm sure you've heard backstage all the rumblings and all that stuff about the ongoing situation with me and the dudes and belts and Damon Ace. Do you have any advice? For dealing with one Damon Ace, considering you just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him at Milestone. 
Is there any weaknesses? Is there any advantages to a guy that like match Damon was Ace? Excellent, by the way. That match was excellent. It was. Yep. Yes. Uh well, first, I definitely want to uh, congratulate you on getting on getting the stones to get in and do what we do, especially against somebody like him. I do wish you nothing but the best of luck because there's a good chance you just may need it. But uh, someone like Damon Ace, I'll tell you this. There's a reason he's called the weapon, because he's always handled by somebody else. He's not exactly the brains of the wake. So... Playing the mind game, the psychological card, something like that just could work in your favor. He's uh, he, he's not really the thinking type. He's a fighter. No two ways about it. He's aggressive, straightforward, but you can only go forward so many times that you may not see the wall before you hit it. So, very, best thing I can tell you, analogy. he is very offensive and offensive, but that gives you the opportunity to play defense. Because, like I said, if you're always in first, second, third, fourth gear, and you go in, you're, you're the one going in reverse, you always can see him coming. I like that. Might have to That's take that smart. into consideration. That's Going smart, forward, John. Getting ready for this, yeah. I wish I had some of that advice before I got in his face at Colorado Cup. I went square at his face, and that was a mistake to do. Found that out firsthand. You might want to... You know, that's a good idea, John. A little bit of mind games here and there. Your favorite wrestler of all time was The Undertaker, right? One of the masters of the mind game through the years. Jesus, guys, sit down with a pencil and paper and come up with something. That's a good idea, Ron. It's a very good idea. Yes. Those are pretty much the only ones I have. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. But as, as so many geniuses throughout history, never appreciated in their own time, so... Let's see if we can try to break the mold and kind of take that advice I'm giving you. You heard the man, John. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm 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 writing it down. <laughs> smart, very smart, wicked smart. Actually, I'm gonna do do that right now. Also, continue. Back to me for the questions. Hmm. Don't say anything about the wig either. No, I, I, I understand, John. I'm not allowed to talk about the wake on the show anymore. I, I, I get that. Um, not right now. I'm sick and tired of your bullshit. That's why. Well, thank it's poop. you. It's, we love you, but it's all poop once it leaves your mouth. On a, on a better subject, uh, one Mr. Prince of Denver. What is your favorite wrestling match of all time? I like to ask this, especially of people who truly, truly are students of the of the sport like you oh that's uh that's a little tough one of my favorite matches without a doubt maybe it is my favorite would be brett versus owen at wrestlemania 10 by far the greatest opening match in wrestlemania history agreed agreed 100 percent and the story behind it was probably one of my favorites as I was growing up and started to really follow professional wrestling. The feud between Brett and Owen was just incredible. And the fact that they were constantly going at it, there were a few moments where even, even Brett would get a little underhanded, a little overaggressive, just to try to level the playing field with his brother, really kind of going against type. You know, do, doing those little those little moments here and there, just to show that you know his his to his younger brother that I, I can be dirty if I have to as well, because Lord knows he has done it in the past when he was teaming with Jim Neidhart, managed by Jimmy Hart way back when. There were some pretty nasty guys back in the day, and you really don't forget how to do things like that. On that night, Owen 
he was the better of the two, without a doubt, because he had something in his pocket that Brett did not see coming. And of course, Brett still went on to reclaim the WWF championship and seeing Owen standing there just in complete awe because you know in his mind that despite beating his brother, Brett still went on as it was scheduled to face Yokozuna for the championship. And he believed that that should have been him. And then, of course, going on to SummerSlam 1994, probably my favorite cage match of all time. That match proved that cage matches, they don't have to be complete and utter bloodbaths. And that was the one thing that Brett was a little concerned about. He, As much as he wanted to beat his brother, he didn't want to do such you know, horrible things in front of their own parents. I, I can't blame him for that. But he did everything that he could to, kid, to try to keep Owen down, as Owen would say in, in his tone, um, and just try to get out of there you know, as, as quickly as he could because he didn't want to go overboard. He didn't want to overdo you know, the, the, the hurt and the suffering on, on his baby brother. Maybe that could have been his downfall at a couple times because Lord knows Owen was not going to do the same thing. He had no qualms whatsoever about doing whatever he had to to beat his brother. Of course, on that night, it was not it was not to be. And uh, I got to say, the, possibly those two matches probably tied for my favorite of all time. Very awesome. That was one hell of a long, drawn story between Owen and Brett through those years. And it was almost a crime that he didn't get the title shot that he deserved for beating Brett that night. It really was a crime. Um, cool. Yeah. So to shift gears a little bit back to one Prince of Darkness yourself, when it's match day, big match day, how do you prepare knowing you're walking into a main event, a, a, a match like, let's say, the level of that you had with Damon for the charge title at Milestone? That's a big high profile match which by the way we were there and the whole crowd was hushed by the two of you going back and forth with each other and just the way you two handled each other it was amazing to be in that crowd i have to say that out loud but how does ronan prepare for a big match big fight day is there anything extra or do you just bring you and the other guys got to deal with it Well, every match really should be a big match when, you, when you're really thinking about it, because every match you have is a reflection of your standing within Rocky Mountain Pro. They, it determines whether or not you climb up the ladder or not, whether the powers that be decide whether or not you deserve to move up. And sometimes, even if you do deserve it, you don't get it. But... It, but that is what it is. For me, I uh, I like to sit and think. I sit in the quiet, the dark, and I just let myself just go. Because sometimes when you sit alone, it's completely silent. Sometimes you hear things from inside yourself that you didn't even know were there because there's so much external stimuli in one's life. And uh, that is why we often take great comfort in our coffins because there is no sound, there is no light. Nothing can get in, nothing can get out. For some of us, that's the only time we have any peace of mind because unfortunately for some of us being what we are it, it's a challenge it's a curse me not so much see i enjoy being what i am i was born this way and uh i've always embraced it and so when i lay in my coffin on those big days. I just wait 
and listen. And you'd be surprised the things that you hear. Sometimes you're not surprised because you knew it was there as soon as you hear it, but you weren't able to before. So it's all about how you get your focus. That's how I get mine. And uh, for better or worse, it's made me who I am. <laughs> Dangerous individual that you are, sitting in solace, finding your own center, embracing what you are instead of worrying about what the other guy is going to bring will always make that person more dangerous in that match. They're worried. They're thinking about what's coming. You know what you're about to bring. That's two separate moments right there. Sunday. My question was actually very similar to Maki's there. Mine wasn't about necessarily a big match, but just any match. Do you have like a, a certain superstition, certain like routines? Like I, I, I have to eat this meal before a match, or I have to, you know, I, I put this shoe on first, or, you know, like something like that. Is there something, do you, do you walk into the ring through a, a certain way every time? Is there, is there something about that, that like you go, if I can keep this, in the same order, I, I'm more comfortable. Well, we all have our our little rituals, things that we go through. For some people, it's wearing a, a certain article of clothing. For some, it's wearing it backwards or inside out or whatever it is those other quote-unquote athletes do. Uh, for me, I take out my little coffin suitcase and I just... Try to remember those things that I heard when I'm sitting alone, trying to focus and process. I don't let myself forget those things that I learned. And as I go through every piece of my attire, I think about what each piece represents, how it's a part of myself, my personality. Every little piece makes the whole. And once I've got it all together, literally and figuratively, that is when I am just in that headspace and I am ready to go. Also, do you have any more? Well, this one's kind of, I don't know so much as if it's a question. Perhaps it's something, maybe a statement Ronan would like to make or a look into the future. But we're about halfway through the year at Rocky Mountain. Just about five months from Milestone that we were in attendance for. What does the back half of this year hold for Ronan? Honestly, that all depends. It all depends on what happens as of Shocktober. And then, depending on what happens there, there are a number of different paths that I could take. There are a number of possibilities, so many different things that I could do. So... It's really like one of those uh, one of those old choose your adventure novels from way back when. It's all about making decisions. So I guess it's really all up to Rocky Mountain Pro. I like that answer. They hold the cards. <laughs> Oh no, they don't hold the cards. Well, no, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> they they play the cards, and then you, you have. I'm the answer. one that's holding the cards, and they are the ones that are gonna have to decide whether or not I'm bluffing, or you're the dealer. Oh, if I were the dealer, oh, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't. I wouldn't even just be at the top of Rocky Mountain Pro. I would be Rocky Mountain Pro. I, I have run a whole city. I bring my community, my people together. You think I don't have what it takes to run a wrestling company? I never said that. I would not say that to you. <laughs> I'm just making sure, in case you didn't know, 
Now you do. <laughs> I like how Coastal's attitude just kind of shifted the other way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, guys, happy doesn't scare me anymore. <laughs> We found something else. Replace them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't think he scared you? Look behind you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. His basement got decloned a couple weeks All ago. Right. Don't forget. Uh, it's not, happy it is not behind him. Sinbodi is. It hasn't had its booster <laughs> D clowning yet. Yeah. Killian Crow is in chat. What is up? Killian. There he is. Hello. Maki. Have you met? Have you met that young man? Actually, I'll I'll forego my question. Have you met that young man, Killian Crow? Oh, I can't say that I have. The name doesn't exactly um, doesn't ring a bell. He uh, fairly good friends with Lilith. We saw him with her not long ago on uh, a couple social media posts, and he seems oh. like a uh, another young man that is interested in some of the uh, some of the other macabre and occult situations um he seems unique amongst other young men his age at this moment in time he may be somebody that you may want to go and say hello to it at some point in time in the near future i guess we're just gonna have to see but you see it's not so much that i should really have to be seeking him out if anything from what you're telling me if he's smart, he's the one that should be seeking me out. I have to agree with that 110%. <laughs> Mr. Crow, if you listen. One thing. Much like a broken fork, just because you're unique doesn't mean you're useful. So we're just going to have to see what happens. If he's, uh, if he's smart enough to request a seat at my table... Well, we'll have to just see now, won't we? Mr. Crow, I would highly recommend that you do that, good sir. Was that foregoing your question, just to make that statement? To be honest, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really have too much of a question. Okay. Sunday? Uh, so mine's going to be a little bit more on the lighthearted uh, area. Earlier, Ronan, you mentioned like cooking is kind of like one of your things you like to do. What's like kind of your favorite, whether it's your favorite thing to cook, favorite thing to eat, like what's your, what, what's kind of your, your, your home there? What's, what's, what's your wheelhouse? Oh, uh, um, my favorite thing to eat, uh, well, I'm, I'm primarily not one to name names, but I'd say my favorite thing to cook, honestly, is the traditional Sunday sauce. That is something that I grew up with from my grandmother and my parents to me. Because sometimes there's really nothing better than, you know, you, you get a big pot on the stove, you get your sauce going, you let it sit. I like to let mine sit for at least a good eight hours. Get a good early start, let that cook down, and it's just perfect by the end of the day. That's, that's the way to do it right there. Yeah, oh yeah, low and slow. Mm -hmm. I humbly request a seat at your dinner table someday to taste that eight-hour <laughs> sauce, good sir. You are speaking magic to this Italian boy. You may just have to do that. Yes, please, someday. All right, Killian Crow, I more than request a seat. I will earn said seat. Mm, okay. Mm. Oh, bold words, but bold words are nothing without equal deeds. DP, we'll has, has Marky, Marky Pins made a challenge yet? To who? who am I challenging? To who? I just asked the man to enjoy a part of his tomato, so I would love to sample that. I'm not going to challenge him. not that stupid. Come on now. <laughs> he, he already fucked up challenge. once this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, was... I got my point across. I paid for it, but I got my point across. All right. Um, Colsa, do you have any more? I don't know. I uh, because we're gonna pass it over to chat. There has been some good wisdom laid down by the Prince yeah. of Denver this evening. I, I definitely agree there. You got your point across to Dean Fleming. <laughs> <laughs> no, he tried to get his point across to me, and I eliminated said Dean Fleming 
and got the first elimination from the Colorado Cup, which who the hell would have ever seen that coming? But <laughs> right place, right time. You come running at me. What, what do you think I'm going to do? Pull a rope down. How, you know how many Royal Rumbles I've watched in my life? That works. And they come running at you. Pull the damn rope down. It works. I didn't even have to hit the guy. Sunday. Luckily, then I, then I had to hit a guy. Better to be lucky than good. Yeah. I'll take that all day. And that we really haven't spot. seen too much of Dean since you eliminated him. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm yeah, way he, he, he might be currently walking to Massachusetts to get you. <laughs> I am honestly waiting for him to show up at my bowling alley and try to say he wants a lane. And when I turn my back to get him a pair of rental shoes, like I eat a finisher or something, <laughs> I'm fully prepared that that may happen someday in my future. But just so you know, his is a claymore. So duck. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Sunday, do you I'll have just, anything? Like, I'll matrix it like on the way back. I, I don't really have. Uh, I mean, we we've been going through, and Ronan's been dishing out so like like uh, Coach said, so much extremely wise, you know, information. I, I wish I had a note. I should have brought a notepad. Oh, no, there's a vod. I'll go back and rewatch this and write it all down. That, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh -oh. oh, and just in time. Oh, uh, here's alphabet soup. Oh Jesus. Fuck. Ron Ronan, let me just say we're sorry. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but we're sorry. So we were gonna get the chat, but I uh, I guess we'll we'll have Triple I say his piece. First of all, you don't apologize for nothing. All right, you should be grateful for my presence on this show. Yeah, you know, the value and entertainment that I bring. Oh, no, no, no. All right. Oh, oh you, yeah. You you bring entertainment. You, I will say that to you, good buddy. I will say that <laughs> Brian's out of here. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> already out. That's good. One less buffoon we have to deal with. One less wake supporter we have to deal with. Even better. All right, Triple I. Do your thing real quick, and then we're waiting on your questions for Ronan. Okay. Well, my voice is a little scratchy, so I can't... Just, I, I just, can't just do it softly. You, you, you don't need to yell like you normally do every fucking week. Just... I like doing that. It makes me feel good. Well, well, I just bought I just bought new headphones. Don't blow them out on me, please. Like, yeah. you know. I can't. I can't because my voice is a little scratchy. So I am the one and only. Ooh, that tickled. <laughs> it makes me giggle too. And for it, Indian inspiration. It was a lot softer this time. That was yeah. a little more. Yeah. Little more subtle. I like it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. It'll be different next week. <laughs> Great. Can't wait. All right, mm -hmm. Triple I. We've had Ronan on here for the past hour. He's been giving us fine, you know, words of wisdom, and his answers to our questions have been amazing as of right now. Um, so please, please don't ruin it because Coastal already almost fucked it up from the get go. Yeah. First question was not, not good. What happened? Uh, you, I, need we'll to, I need to. I need to know. We'll tell you we'll later. Don't bring it. We're not going to bring yeah, it back up. We're not whatever. bringing it back up. <laughs> the conversation turned a lot lighter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's not wreck it. So I we guess it. it's one on one between Triple I and Ronan for the next fifteen minutes or so until we get Chad involved. Again, Ronan, we're sorry. Yes, ahead of time. <laughs> There's nothing to apologize for. All right. Yeah. I am very unique in my. I'm very unique in my own way, just like Ronan. That's what makes us stand out from the rest of everyone. All right. That's what makes it special. So there you go. So at first, Ronan, I, I love what you're wearing. I, I'm digging it. And, I, and I'm actually being serious. I'm not being sarcastic. Like, I'm digging it. Um, Thank you. You're very welcome. So my first question, I'll get right to it. So right now, you are managing uh, Legion, obviously, with you, Brumach. Um, you, Brumach, Will with Grimm, and about to. And I've noticed Brumach has had a you know, some, a few singles matches lately, and he's been a standout. He's been, he's been killing it, kicking ass. He had a really good match against Lipto as well a few weeks ago. So my question is, do you potentially see Brumach uh, uh, going in separate ways, potentially? God, and breaking out from, what are you from... doing? Oh my God. What? Oh, I it's came a... back the wrong time on that. What? No. <laughs> what? Well, well, I, I already yeah. asked this question. Well, I, no, no, no. That's not my fault. I <laughs> asked you guys in the beginning, what did he ask? And you said, we'll tell you later. Not my fault. No, no. It's all on you. That's definitely all on you right there. Not my damn fault. 
Not on me. I'll, I'll admit he's got a point. <laughs> Just keep that hat on and nobody will notice. <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, nice. Uh, yeah, you got here. Yeah, you got in late to the game. I'll uh, I'll, I'll play along this one time. I'll admit he is definitely coming along because of the little bits of knowledge that I'm able to drop here and there that he's able to take in. And uh, yeah, he's been he's been making progress. I, I cannot deny that. And as I've said many a time in the past, anybody who joins me does so for no other reason than they want to. Nobody is forced to stand at my side, and nobody is forced to stay. If he feels that the path that he is heading down is a path on his own, then I wish him nothing but the best, because that's the same way that I was. I had nobody to teach me. I had nobody to help me. I did things all on my own from day one, and I walked my own path. He walked his own path in the beginning, as we all do, but there was something missing, and that something was yours cruelly. And because of me, he is now starting to come into his own and realize his potential. Thank now you for it's the very well possible, Dr. Mike. That he may grow to, well, not be beyond my control, but he may be almost capable of standing on his own. And as long as his interests don't conflict with mine, he can go wherever he pleases. But there are always consequences. So he just has to remember where each step he takes is going to lead him. Because if he sees me down the road, it's possible that he may have to reconsider and take another path. Oh God, I get, I get the tingles from that answer. It, it, it was like you, you're, you're, you are wishing him the best and you want him to explore all opportunities, but if he does, and he goes across that road, and he comes across your path while going down that road, all bets are off. Oh, God, I get the shivers right now. Ooh, like from top to bottom. And you don't, and, the whole well, interview, Oz, you've missed a hell of an interview, but Yeah, that's, that's been the whole way. Some yeah. big wisdom bombs have been dropped by one Prince of Denver. I just asked, I just asked one question, and I'm already taken back with, with the answers and the, and the information you just bestowed upon us. One question, that's all it freaking took. You know what? If I get my, if I become a professionally trained wrestler, and Brumach wants to, I will join Legion. Okay, <laughs> I will join Legion. I can point, I can paint red on myself. I can have, I can, I can drip out blood out of my mouth. Whatever. I can have a bunch He's of. He's a buffalo. Through. You're a donkey. Huh? <laughs> I want to. I want to be. I want to be. I know that. I know that. Oh, I, st I, st I still want to be. I still want to be like Ronan. I don't have to be a Buffalo to take his place. I can be my own person so be part of Legion. You doofus stinkle. God. We did have a long conversation, and Ronan was throwing it out there about literally being yourself, not being somebody else. And there is nobody in our particular circle of friends that is definitely more their self than you, Triple I. And I will always respect you and love you for that. I, you make us laugh. You are definitely one hell of an interesting cat. And you have always been yourself. Well, thanks, asshole. And right I, back at you. Right I've back known to you all a long of you. Time. All right. Yeah, except for Coastal. You know, now he, I'm going to go back to making fun of yeah. you, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Right, good, good. good. Uh, I, I love that answer. So I, I guess, and let me guess. Um, the next question I'm going to ask you guys, I've probably already asked it already. But well, it I depends. Will... Well, I'll ask it regardless. So... Do you do you have any Excuse me. Pro prospects in mind? Brumach stays or not, it doesn't matter. Any prospects, potential possibilities, options that you want to recruit to Legion to make your faction even stronger than what it already is right now? I don't think anybody make it more asked dominant. that. Make it even more dominant no. than what it is right now. Because I see you guys getting stronger and stronger. 
And I think it's a real possibility, uh, Ronan, that you guys can take all the championship belts from the week and have it in your group instead. But in order to do that, I feel like you might need to add one more member or so. Definitely something to think about. I could always use more people. No two ways about it. Misery does love company after all. But uh, you see, it's not so much just about bringing more people. It's never about quantity over quality in my world. You have to be able to bring something to my table. Nobody eats for free with me. You have to provide something, whether it's a service, a talent. Everybody gets what they give. You put in and you get out. It's as simple as that. And you see, I don't really actively recruit per se, at least not until I know what I want. But now it's really more of who has got the sense and who really has the drive to succeed and know that if there's a place to go, it's under my learning tree. Because as I said earlier, I've seen it all, I've done it all, good and bad. And if there's anybody who can teach you what it's like to learn how to be nothing more than yourself and get the most out of it, because I am as real as it gets in Rocky Mountain Pro, then this is the place to be. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, I I think we've been echoing the same sentiment for the past several months, if not over the past year, that Rocky Mountain Pro is the place to be right now with some of the best talent uh, in this country, uh, hands down. Uh, I think we're all on the same table regarding uh, regarding that aspect of it. I guess my last question for you for now, until I think of some more, is you just said it yourself, Ronan. You, you've, you've, seen it, you've, you've seen it all. You've done it all. You're a veteran. You've been around. With that being said, what would you say your number one priority for you? N not, not Legion, but for you right now as an individual. Well, one of my priorities, of course, is giving back to that next crop of talent that is just aching to come up and can't find their voice. They can't find who they are. And that's what I am able to give to them. So giving back at this point is definitely a priority for me because I'd like to think that not only have I learned enough for myself, but I can take what I've learned and give it back to others. Yes, that is definitely important because that's how the cycle keeps going. You've got the young new talent that learns from the old, then eventually everything gets cycled out. The old guard walks away, then the new becomes the old, and watch and repeat. So that I definitely try to focus on, trying to give back what I've learned, but at the same time, being I'm not quite done yet, at least I don't think I am. And as I mentioned before, that you weren't here for, I have a space out on my mantle that needs to be filled. Whether it's Dustin Urich, whether it's Balaam Lynx, or anybody else who may come along and stand at the top of Rocky Mountain Pro, that just makes me wonder, who am I going to have to knock off to finally get what I deserve after all these years? And that's the answer I was looking for, because every professional wrestler, whether it's RMP or not RMP, your main goal, one of your main goals should be to be at the top of the food chain, the top of the mountain, uh, and, and that is to be, you know, your promotions wrestling champion, in this case, RMP champion, you, the top dog, the head of the honcho, and, and that's what it comes down to. And you, once, obviously, 
you achieve that goal, you have a huge target on your back. But obviously, if you also achieve that goal, you can handle the target on your back as well. And I have no doubt, I have no qualms about the qualms about it that you can handle it with for sure. But that that's that's exactly what I was thinking. I like your I like your first answer too, giving back and the cycle uh, of you know the re, uh, of essentially evolution, no pun intended. You know, so that's what makes the wrestling business keep going. Very true. Um... Triple I, was that your last question? For now, for now, yes. I, I am. I have out of all the guests that I have interviewed, uh, that we have interviewed, uh, I have asked three consecutive questions, and I have been astonished and blown away in a very positive way with every single answer you have given me, like in a row consecutively. I usually I make fun of someone or whatever, but I, I couldn't in this case. You know, yeah, that's, and, and, that's a good idea. Okay. Instead, I make fun oh. of Coastal instead. You know. Mm-hmm. Not a good idea. So, oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I enjoy. I enjoy watching you in the ring. So, for Coastal, Marky, Sunday, and Triple I, if you have any other questions throughout this last part of the show, feel free to ask and jump in whenever questions come up, including myself. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it over to Chat. Chat, if you want to join the Discord, that is the link to the Discord server. If you're a subscriber. You will be allowed into the call to ask one question to Ronan face to face. If not, or if you're shy, or if you're just flat out terrified for whatever reason, you can answer ask the question in chat. Make sure you highlight it so I can see it. And then we're gonna go from there. I know Jet probably wants to ask a question to you, Mr. Ronan, face to face. Oh god. He is your number one fan. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So I will be waiting on him and on the waiting list. And also, guys, if you are going to do the Discord call, if you're a subscriber, make sure you join the waiting list channel, which there he is right there. Jet, come on in. Make sure you jump into the waiting list uh, part of the Discord so that I can see that you're ready to jump in next. Just make everything a little bit more easier for me. And we got Owen Easton, hashtag shut Owen up Owen already Jet. with the yeah. hashtag shut up Jet. <laughs> and here he is. Long time subscriber to the show. There he is. Jet1294. Jet, meet Ronan. Ronan, meet Jet. <laughs> Mute. Unmute yourself, doofus. Unmute, knucklehead. I wasn't going to tell him. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be quiet, Coastal. <sighs> Ronan, it's an honor to meet you, sir. It certainly is. <laughs> Honestly, you guys have asked most of the questions I came up with today, but this one better than you. the one that does come to mind is if you could have your choice, like anyone who's going to be at Shocktober, whom would you want to face? Well, obviously, if I <laughs> if I had my way, I would be challenging for the Rocky Mountain Pro title. But unfortunately, uh, the powers that be just do not want to give me the opportunities that I have earned after all this time. But it is what it is, and they'll get theirs in due time. But uh, I don't want to shoot too high, really, because I know I'm according to some people, possibly on my way out, on the tail end of my career. But as long as I can still go, I can still hurt people. And being that, you know, Gangrel is going to be in town, it would be nice to have just a little face-to-face time with the man himself. A man who, will I will be honest, inspired me to be who I am. Because I didn't want to be something I'm not. I didn't want to copy somebody else who's already been a success doing what they do who wants to be the next this or that right because of him i was able to be myself and be happy with that and for better or worse i've made a pretty decent little career at it and i would like to of course thank him for that but at the same time he is coming into my city and no matter what Respect still needs to be shown to the prince. So, maybe him and I will have a little talk, and 
who knows what else could happen. But considering at this point, Rocky Mountain Pro has given me all of nothing to do with Shocktober. There's really nothing else for me to do but take matters into my own hands. And uh, whoever I'm in the ring with, pretty sure they're not going to live long enough to regret it. Well, thank you for the time, Ronan. You have yourself a wonderful day, and keep up the amazing matches. Thank you. Wow, that was quick. Yeah, we got to have Ronan on all the time because Jet was <laughs> like, wow, that was great. I, I think he was scared. You scared him away. <laughs> that all was right. the tamest we have ever seen Jet. The on next this one show. that has popped onto the waiting list right now is Conductor Mike. But hold on, Mike. I oh. want to ask this one question. Um, what are your thoughts on this ongoing um, movement, I guess you could say, ever since Peak of the Pack? Hashtag Buffaloan. A very good question to ask the man. Well, maybe I'm just showing my age, but I don't really put a lot into these hashtags and all these little social media things that people do. I I just don't get it myself because, you know, back in my day, if you wanted to talk to somebody, if you wanted to run your mouth at somebody, you had to do it to their face and suffer the consequences. So people can say whatever they want. They can get behind their little keyboards, do whatever they please. It's fine. It doesn't really bother me because there's not a one of them that if face to face would have the stones that they do on the internet. But clearly, clearly there's something, there's got to be something behind this, right? I mean, so many people are watching the show. They get their own little ideas. I'll admit, Owen, kid's got a lot of potential. He's got guts. Maybe a little short on brains, but he's got guts, which counts for a lot. Maybe... Maybe this is his way of saying that he wants to come hang with the prince. Maybe. He doesn't really seem the type. But, as I've said, it's, it's all about who you are. He may not look it, but it's what's really on the inside that counts. And uh, I definitely wouldn't mind tangling with him a couple more times and... Maybe taking him apart a little bit just to see what he's got on the inside. There you go. And like Owen. you said, like you said, we've seen Owen have a lot of guts. We've seen Owen and Brumach tag team together a few times and look pretty good doing it. A couple of the new guys on the way up. Like, how do you feel when you see like we 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 heard your explanation about what happened if Brumach were to walk away, you'd give him his blessing, however, he'd have to look over his shoulder totally understand that point but how do you feel about him going off with a guy like owen two young guys that you mentored one and now that knowledge that you passed on to brumach now he's kind of taking that and making it its own with owen does that give you any feelings good bad indifferent do you not care or is (laughs) brumach still brumach to you well i wouldn't go so far as to say i don't care uh I really say more is I'm not particularly concerned because Brumach right now, he knows what side of bread his is buttered on. Simple as that. He knows where he belongs. He knows where he needs to be to be able to learn, to grow. And he's he is indeed right where he should be. But... Nothing is forever. No parents can hover over their child forever. No, not at all. My mom was over me. They get out of the nest, and they need to learn to fly on their own. So if he decides that somewhere down the road he wants to try things by himself or with somebody else as a partner, then again, I have no qualms about it. He just has to understand that I have taught him everything that he knows, but not everything that I know. And 
not so much to stay out of my way or look over his shoulder, no, nothing so severe, but he needs to understand that whatever path he decides to take, if it, if it almost pains me to say this, if it brings him back to me and he is against me and not with me, then despite everything that we have been through, everything I have given him and taught him, that all goes out the window because an opponent is an opponent. I also got a nice little thing in chat here from Owen Easton himself. I'm always here, Ronan, anytime, anywhere. Oh. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Remember what I said about uh, just talking on the internet, Owen? You you know where I am show after show, and you know where to find me. <laughs> well, there you go, Owen. Uh, Conductor Mike, come on in. And again, guys, if you have any questions in chat, if you don't want to hop into the Discord and ask a question, face to face you're more than welcome to ask your question in chat just make sure you highlight it they're probably scared of ronin right now it's not working yet hang on there we go oh, oh wow look at all those That's the right there. there you go there you go oh, oh, hang no. on oh, oh, he yeah. the phone. just hold it there you go yeah i put the axe display out for you guys just because Thank you. Um, a nice little coll collection you got there. Thank you. There's two that are still in cases. Uh, I just didn't feel like trying to get them all in the picture. <laughs> um, so thank you for having me on, guys. Um, so pretty much everybody's asked every question under the sun uh, tonight, or under the moon, rather. Um, my question's more generated towards what kind of music do you listen to maybe when... Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or getting ready for a match, is there anything that you would prefer to listen to to get you ready? Good question. That hasn't been asked yet. Let's see. Well, my musical tastes, I'll be honest, are quite varied. Uh, if you were to look through my collection, you would see a veritable cardiac arrest of genres, just from here to here to here, and so on and so forth. I mean... Everything from Combi Christ, the Birthday Massacre, Mozart, the Andrew Sisters. I mean, you name it, I pretty much listen to it because only restricting yourself to certain types of music and not being willing to open yourself up and have have an open mind, you really you really do limit yourself and you find yourself missing out on quite a bit. But when it comes to show days, uh, there are certain tracks that I do happen to listen to that are very personal to me. Uh, one of them, of course, is my theme music, to say the least. It speaks to me more than just about anything else out there. But I'm not going to go into details because everybody has their secrets, and there are definitely a, is a small playlist that I like to have kind of just running on through in my headphones, in my car, to help me get my focus and help me get into that mindset of knowing just what I'm going to have to do when that bell rings and how much I'm going to have to hurt somebody, who I'm going to have to hurt. I need to focus on what I'm going to do instead of wondering who exactly who I'm going to do it to because when you start when you start humanizing your opponent that's when you start showing weakness so you have to think of your opponent in the ring as a hurdler thinks of a hurdle simply a means to an end so my music that i listen to it gets me focused on the fact that nothing more than somebody is going to get hurt and i'm going to get what i want I like that. That's a solid answer. Very good answer. Oh, and uh, Jet, next time you jump out, when I jump into the waiting list because you stole my damn raft, 
Wait till that Canadian border opens up, buddy. I'm coming in and get it. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. Got too many back and forth going on in this channel right now. <laughs> <laughs> so triple uh, I would call it Brussels sprout on Brussels sprout crime. Yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> Let them go at it. One less idiot in this world. BPCL has a chat question. <laughs> When is Titus going to stop hiding from Destiny and give a bot to a title match with Dustin? I... I... <laughs> fucking Ronan. Oh, man. Um, BP, what? what are you doing, man? <laughs> Why are you highlighting that? <laughs> you know, it really takes a lot to render someone like me speechless, but uh, <laughs> it ain't now. I don't know... <laughs> Well, whatever you're on, do yourself a favor and cut the dose, because... <laughs> yeah, BP just said Ronan knows Abatu better than any of us, reaction. and he's right. So listen to what the man's saying. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I guess... Is, everyone deserves a chance. Everyone deserves the opportunity to be the top man. It's simple. Every, everybody, in the end, is in it for themselves. That's a fact. And hey, if some point he thinks that he wants a shot to be the top man, that's all well and good. As long as he doesn't get in my way and remember just who it is that he is serving. I mean, and even if we looked at win losses, singles matches, if if he had the record, I'm sure somebody would have seen it by now and given a shot. This is true. Right. I mean, even if we just looked at the, the, the ones and zeros of the wins and losses, it's not there. It's not there. Damn, it's not quite there, but not for lack of trying. I will give True. him that. True. He, he's learning slowly but surely. He's trying to come along. So who knows what the future holds? I mean, we did see a match a couple months ago on Charged where he had a match with a one-on-one -on -one with a Tiba. And he looked pretty good in that match. I know we lost. They ended up losing that match. But it, it wasn't an outing that you look and you go, oh, no. No, it was a good match, but still came up short. What are your thoughts? What, is your, what are your thoughts on Atiba, actually? We know that, that that's another online movement going on right now to trying to get him signed. Do you Absolutely. agree? Oh, I, I agree 100%. I, I recognize talent when it is there, and his talent cannot be denied. The fact that he has not at least been given a good look, at least that, that we know about, is certainly a crime. So I, I anticipate he will certainly be, be on nationwide television in no time flat, and I certainly do look forward to seeing it. I think we all can agree there as well. I think I think we're all kind of trying to jump on that movement of sign a Tiber, that little emote that's going on around the Twitch world between Rocky Bell and Pro in this channel as well. Um, it's, it's unanimous, without a doubt. Yeah, definitely. Um, chat, you guys are blanked. You guys have no questions. This is a first. Wow. And, and, and They're in all. Yeah, I know. Well, oh. Everybody's afraid to come up with a question like you did to start off the show and, and get on yeah, Ronan's so, bad side. So can we get into that now? You said you'd get into it later. It's not later. So, so we, by later we No, might, we're not going to bring it back up. Not, no, not bringing it up in front of Ronan again to get him angry again. I have enough problems <laughs> with you know as as Ronan called them manufactured oddities in the circus and clowns and things like that. I I don't need any trouble with Ronan. I was never trying to start trouble with Ronan. Uh, you know, the Walmart PB Herman. That was yeah. the best line of the <laughs> night. <laughs> yes, triple I. Ronan has called Mr. Budflower the Walmart Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> That's right. Oh, wow. Man, triple I and uh, Mr. Bellflower have a little bit of history dating you know, back to Colorado Cup. And before. And yes. before that. When we uh, had a similar interview to this with Mr. Bellflower. Oh, Chad, you are speechless, huh? I guess we're going to have to cut this show short. 
Walmart, Pee Wee Herb. Where in the? Did you check the waiting list? Oh, oh there's somebody shit. on the waiting list. There's oh. uh, an individual on the waiting list, Mr. Ronan. Somebody who's already said a few words towards we you. Won't, we won't say his name, but we'll have him come on, and you should probably have your cam on, sir, when you come on. So you are more than welcome to hop on. Yes. Mike, that's a good question. We'll ask that in a couple minutes. It's a horrible question. No, it's not. No, it's not. Oh, I thought. Oh, I thought. I thought you were talking from Czech reviewer. Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. There he is. Well, what's up, everybody? What's up, bud? Hello. You gonna I know that voice. Your camera on, or well, maybe if it decides to fucking work. I reckon that voice. Well, I'm here, Ronan. I don't know if he left. Did I miss him? <laughs> no, oh, he's oh. here. <laughs> oh, he's, he's here, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah, stupid camera. Otherwise, I'm here. Um, there he is. Oh, oh there we go. There uh, no, 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 there, there we is. go. Oh, no, 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 no. Ryan. Uh, Ryan. Uh, I'm going to be here someday. Like Ronan said, I will say I'm not very technology inclined, but you know what? I will whoop an ass in the middle of a ring. <laughs> So there, I, it yeah. Well, uh, but Mr. Ronan, I... hold up. Okay, oh, we're having some technical difficulties. Yes, oh, yeah. we are. <laughs> Ronan, do you recognize the voice? I think I do. Okay. Yeah. Well, I am here. I am always here. And I always try to talk to you at the end of the show just to say, hey, good show, like I do to everybody. But, you know, you disappear before everybody. So, like I said, I'm here. I'm always going to be here. And you just say anytime, anywhere. I don't care where it is. You can even bring that coffin out if you would like. Bring that out of that, bring it out of that house. I don't care. But I'm going to show that Brumok deserves something better than to be degraded to be looked down on, to be slapped in the face on TV. So, yeah, that's me. I'm here. And I know I went on a ramble, but that's it. And like I said, I'm here. Boys, be quiet. Let Ronan respond. Oh, well, yeah, you're a bold one. I'll give you that. And I do know that you do try to seek me out, but you, you must understand that I don't have all night. I have places to go, people to eat, and a city to run. You're, so you really have to catch me just a little bit earlier. But uh, once you do, you know what they say about uh, asking, asking for something because you just might get it. <laughs> as far as Brumock goes, like I've said, he, you know, he may eventually find his own path one day, but he's not quite ready to leave the nest and fly on his own. Well, like I said, he is going to be my best friend someday, and it's going to happen. And like, it's not even a hashtag anymore. It's a straight thing, and I am right here. Hat Buffalo is going to be a thing. Your little legion isn't going to be standing anymore, just like the week isn't going to be standing for very much longer. Easy. All right, we guys, are gonna we'll take get to your it. questions gonna very run, soon like, after this. It's going to be amazing. So it, we're going to take RMP to the light side. And you know what? I'm talking to the Prince of Denver, not the king, so you might be looking at the king one day, brother. Oh! All right. I guess we are just going to have to wait and see then. <laughs> we are. So that you actually have a question? Or... <laughs> no, I, he, he said I was hiding behind the keyboard, so I was not going to hide behind my keyboard. Somebody book it and take my money. Take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take his money so I can see it as well. <laughs> well, oh. boys, it, it was great. I got what I wanted to say out, and I like I said, I'm here. Y'all have a fantastic rest of your show. Ronan, thank, thank you, buddy. Do you? Everybody have a great night, and we will see you guys later. Mm. Later, buddy. See you. See you all. Bye, man. That was interesting. Wow. Yes. It happens from time to time on the show. I mean, you don't have a match for October yet, so maybe this is a possibility. 
Well, it just may be. I mean, he's obviously trying to throw that gauntlet down, but he may end up regretting it when it gets picked up and shoved down his throat. But we've still got a good couple weeks to go. Nothing is set in stone for Shocktober, so I guess we're just going to have to wait and find out. All right. And during that whole exchange, we did have a couple questions that was brought up in chat, so I will get through them one by one. Thank you guys all for highlighting them. Greatly appreciate it, so I can pick them out. Uh, Conductor Mike, Ronan, who would you want to have one of these NRW stipulation matches with? No list, just a random person. I'm assuming probably between Gaiden and... Uh, <coughs> I think. Oh wait, no, that didn't end. Sorry. To be disclosed. Actually, no. The, the didn't the round two list come out? I believe it did, uh, but unfortunately, I've got so many other things of my yeah. own to take care of, and I'm not involved in that, so I'm really not concerning myself with the who's who. But if you've got a list, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to run it down. I believe it's. Warren and Brumark. And then it is. Oh, what was the other one? It was RJ against Owen. Oh. That's the second half. I'm not quite sure. I mean, there, of course, there's any number of stipulations that could arise from this NRW championship. That's really something I probably may have to think a little bit more on because it's not just a simple one-on-one, -on -one, uh, being that every match, as I said, would be under a certain stipulation. I know there are a couple things that I would like to kind of check off my list. It's been a good while since I've done a cage match. It's been a while since I've done a ladder match. I've never done a barbed wire match, which I know is the specialty of a certain somebody among other types of matches, seeing all the the scars and the marks that he's got in his body. And I'll admit, it even kind of slightly turns my stomach just a little bit, thinking about how much he sacrifices himself. But uh, I don't know. Orn Veidt definitely seems like someone who I would like to test the limits of and test my own limits, so... I guess we're just going to have to see who the uh, very first NRW champion is and then just go from there. Does it pique your interest? This NRW title coming back, does this pique Ronan's interest as something you want to go for at some point, or do you still have your eyes on the other prize? Oh, I've always got my eyes on multiple prizes. Did you ask your questions next? Of course, everybody wants to be, you know, the proverbial king of the mountain, be the Rocky Mountain Pro champion. But to be one of the very first NRW champions, ever since that championship was brought back under new rules and so on, I definitely would not, uh, not thumb my nose at the idea of having that belt on my mantle. Albeit, of course, as a stepping stone to loftier pursuits. Interesting. All right. We have a question from Jet. Yes, I know, Jet. What do you think of these rumors that Titus may be behind the wake? Well, Coastal I wouldn't be at all up. surprised. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest. <laughs> because... A tiger never changes his stripes. He can come back and Track your questions say next. and do whatever he wants, wants to act like he's a changed man. You know what? I've looked in his eyes as of late, and I see the very same person, that very same person who attacked a weakened man who was seconds away from finally gaining what he desired for so long. I see that same look in his eyes today. 
So I don't trust him in the slightest to not be behind the wake. But nobody's perfect, even me, maybe. So it's possible that he isn't. It's possible that he is. I guess... I guess that really all depends on him and if he wants to have yet another target on his rather ample back. All right, we have seems a... to be... oh, Go ahead, go ahead no, continue. I was going to say, that seems to be the general consensus amongst many people is it's been recognized that he's tried to turn a leaf, should we say. But then there's always those things, if you've wronged somebody in the past, they never forget. You, ne you never forget who's wronged you, who screwed you over, who's done those things in any aspect of life. And I think a lot of people are just hesitant and, and leery of just throwing all of their trust out. That's very true. Just because you say you're a different person now, you're turning over a new leaf, yada, yada, yada. That doesn't undo the things that you've done in the past. The good does not outweigh the bad. You still have to deal with the repercussions of your past, and you have to deal with the fact that there are people that are still not going to trust you. There are people that are always going to have their back to the wall when dealing with you like myself. Because the last time that I didn't, it pretty much cost me about everything but I've learned let's just hope that Titus has learned as well question Very strong words question from the Trek reviewer Ronan what do you think of Bud Bellflower we um, this. he's uh, interesting He's he's obviously the the big old pitch man, the barker, leading around a bunch of manufactured freaks. When the, the fact is, pretty sure that even his own people are starting to get tired of him. I mean, you can only lead somebody so much to the top and still fall short. And you have to wonder who's to blame. Who is that X factor that always has them falling short? I mean, Monster 9, he is a veritable beast. He's a quite the disturbing individual, and I have quite the respect for him because I've, uh, I've had those massive hands around my neck, and even I didn't like it too much. Happy? He's, uh, well, the elevator doesn't go all the way up to the top floor. I'll just put it to you that way. But even they know. I mean, Bearded Lady left him. Echo left him. It's only a matter of time before whatever it is that he has as their leader runs out. And eventually... I think something bad is bound to happen to him. Now, of course, I don't really wish bad on anybody unless I'm doing it myself, because then for a fact, I know they've got it coming. Well, that's but, different. Uh, well, what goes around comes around, and hopefully Bud realizes it before it's too late. I think Bud should take up a new profession. What do you think he should do? What would be theater good for a, a Walmart? Well, <clears throat> well, can't even say what I was theater usher. Right, right, right now, I mean, it, it is almost Halloween, so the one month a year he could be like, you know, a customer service associate at those spooky, those what do you call it, spooky world stores for uh, Halloween or whatever it's called. Spirit of yeah, Halloween. Spirit, spirit Halloween. Spirit, spirit of Halloween. I couldn't remember. Spirit yeah, spirit, thank you, Spirit of Halloween. They're in business one month out of the year, essentially, maybe two months. So he'll be good at that, you know, he'd make a little bit of money there and then go get paper routes to supplement his income after that, you know. But managing, wrestl word. managing wrestlers in the professional wrestling uh, world is uh, unfortunately not cutting it for him. 
You know? Ro- I, and, and don't take my word. Ronan just said it himself. I mean, Ronan just just lay out the facts of who has left uh, Three Ring Circus. So there you go right there. The proof's in the pudding right there. You guys see more. And as far as I can see from chat, this could be our last question of the night. Coming from BPCL, which stipulation do you like more, casket or soul on a pole match? <laughs> Why? Ooh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. I mean, Dean and I, we definitely tore at each other quite a bit. And it took a lot for me to finally get him down and Put him in my coffin. He was a uh, he's a hell of a fighter. No two ways about it. But on the other hand, good old Sammy Six Guns is a hell of a competitor in his own right, and is off doing incredible things now, which nobody is surprised. Uh, it's a little bit easier to get somebody down just enough to climb up to a, a pole and pull something down as opposed to having to stuff somebody into a coffin, close the lid. They're both really, really important to me because there were some pretty big moments in my career. But uh, honestly, I really can decide from the two. It's got to be a, that's a pretty hard tie there. And we did have a last second question from Trek Reviewer. Ronan. Where did you get that chair? It's your own. It's his iron throne. You don't, don't want to know how fire. he got that chair. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> no, trust me, you do not. And uh, again, I really can't uh, can't name names, but a lot of people went into making that. <laughs> <laughs> That's one fantastic way to put it. Does that answer your question, <laughs> Trek? <laughs> if it doesn't... It's going to have to. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, you can extrapolate whatever you need out of that one, but uh, oh, question another one. answered. Another one from Jet. Guys, uh, last second questions. Holy crap. No, what? in all fairness, Jet asked us one like yeah. 15, 20 minutes ago, and we never got to it. What is your theme song? My theme song is appropriately titled Fallen from Grace. You and it has a, has a wonderful acoustic Susie and the Banshees type vibe, once again, showing my age. But the moment I heard that song and I listened to those lyrics, it all came together for me. It made me realize who I should have been from the start. Instead of trying to be the hero that you people wanted me to be, what I thought you wanted, only to be turned on the minute that I fall short through no fault of my own. And that's when I realized I had to do things for myself, do things the only way that I have ever truly done them, and that is my way. And listening to that song, I realized I didn't want to be saved. I didn't want people to think that I was the one that had fallen. It was all of you because you're fickle. You're like Baskin Robbins. You got to have your 31 flavors. If one doesn't please you one time, you move right on. And now, I'm sure a lot of you are regretting it. Because now, instead of being the hero that I thought you wanted, I'm going to be the evil that you need, whether you like it or not. (laughs) You're muted, Mark. I was like, my God, and he said that with a smile, too. And then I said, look at Triple I, look at eyes, just, <laughs> just frozen. He gets a statue. <laughs> you okay, Triple I? I was just mesmerized. <laughs> because I I, I, I I, can resonate with those words on a personal level um, throughout my life. And, and you, 
yeah, screw everyone else, essentially. You have to do what's best for you, you know? No one's going to support and advocate for you as much as yourself. You're your number one supporter. You're your number one advocate. Not, any, not anyone else, not any of these dumbass Brussels sprouts in chat. No one in life, you, you know? And that's what it comes down to. Last I check, Ronan, who pays your bills? Ronan pays your bills. No one else pays your bills. You do. So... When the shit hits the fan, are they, uh, they going to be there for you? Is anyone else going to be there for you? No. Nope. They can look up for themselves, and that's it. So that's why I was mesmerized by that, because I can relate to that in my life as well. And hopefully everyone else here on this chat can relate to it some way, shape, or form as well, because it's, it's a God-honest truth. It really is. So we have another last-second question from Trek. I think you answered this one earlier. But uh, we'll ask it anyway. You can give the same answer if you want. Ronan, was your character based on the leader of the brood, which would be Gangrel? Well, it wasn't based on, on the character, but Gangrel as an individual did inspire me. Okay, you know, sounds like you weren't here earlier, so I'll let you slide. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I was born a vampire, I am a pure blood. And I've been living this way ever since I came out of the coffin as a teenager. And I wasn't sure, as a professional wrestler, what I was going to do at first. I knew I wanted to be a wrestler ever since I was young, like so many of us that eventually find our way into the ring. But I, it didn't really all come together until I saw Gangrel on television. Because I realized then and there, this guy, he brought himself to the table, and he filled his plate. And that's what made me realize I didn't have to come up with a character. I didn't have to go to the office. I didn't have to talk to the promoters and get help coming up with a persona. All I had to do was take the person that I had been all my life. The person that I am out in the streets, out in the club, run, running my community, and just crank that dial till it broke. And now here I am. There you go, Trek. Mm hmm I believe that was the last question in chat that I can see, which means that we're going to wrap up the show tonight, guys. Uh, Ronan. Can to let everybody know your socials and anything like that so people can reach you and follow you? Absolutely. You can, you can catch me on this whole TikTok thing that everyone's doing. Just search for the Prince of Denver. You can find me on Instagram at 47Vamp. I've currently got a promotion going. We've got tickets available for Shocktober. Just let, look, look through my wall. You're going to see for every 10 tickets that are sold through the link on my page, I'm going to auction off to one lucky person, one of my 8x10s, every 10 tickets sold. One person is going to get, one of those people is going to get a picture. 25 tickets sold, you will get my best of volume one DVD. And 50 tickets sold, one very lucky person is going to get themselves a one of a kind blood spatter painting done by, by yours cruelly. Of course, of course, you're going to be at the show. I will present it to you myself. If you can't make it, then that's not a problem. We will certainly work something out. All you need to do is show me a screenshot of you know, your ticket purchase so I can get everything all pulled together. Anybody who buy, and of course, anybody who buys a ticket is not going to be left out. Even if you don't win something, everyone's going to get a nice little discount on all my merch at Shocktober. And as a little sidebar here, if anyone's interested, there's this nice little movie that I worked on not too long ago that has won multiple awards and is actually going to be screening at the legendary Groman's Chinese Theater. Look up at that. This film called American Cannibals, made by none other than my people, the Rocky Mountain Vampire Family, the only vampire movie with real vampires in it. <laughs> Oh, shit. There you go, guys. You guys feel that chill come back into the room here a little <laughs> yeah. tiny bit? Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. a new Oofa. movie to watch. <laughs> right? 
Not before yep. you go to bed, though. That has <laughs> probably that's been... been... That, that, you watch that in the daylight. Oh, you wake up, you have your coffee, one. and then you make sure you have approximately 10 to 12 hours of daylight after to watch Spongebob. <laughs> yes. Yeah, SpongeBob, he said. Conductor Mike coming in big right there with that comment. Ronan with the A plus plug on Shocktober. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Get over to his Instagram. Buy your tickets. Get your entries in. So, guys. Everybody, show up to Shocktober. That was Ronan. Fantastic interview by Ron Ronan. We thank him very much for being here. Um, Absolutely. Next yeah. week, we will have the number one contender, Balaam Lynx. And then the following week, we, we have a, a another big interview with Loth Grimm and Reagan Grimes at the same time. Now, that should be a very interesting one. Um, very all... quickly, very quickly. Go before ahead. we end it, real quick, very quick, just because you brought up Lilith and Reagan. Now that Reagan is back, tell me, has she changed any dynamic of Legion? Have you noticed any change in, in Lilith? Has that affected anything in the least bit? Have you noticed anything different in Lilith? Or have you seen something in Reagan personally? Oh, I've seen quite a change in both of them. I think Lilith is really starting to come into her own. She is finally starting to tame that that anger, that aggression that she was known for. She was so, well, she used to get so focused on the pain that she would get from her opponents that she enjoys almost as much as giving it, that she would lose that focus. And that was her Achilles heel. But now... Through my teaching, she has learned to control that. She gets plenty from me that she doesn't have to worry about getting anything from her opponents. And that focus is what is pushing her right to the top of the Lockett's division. And I think that with the change I've seen from Reagan as of late, ever since she's come back, there is a side of her that I did not see before. She's, how do I put it? She's content with her madness. And I think that is very good for her because you see, no matter what you are, no matter what other people say is wrong with you, it's still a part of what you are and you have to find the joy in it. You have to find, you have to find how to, been that in a positive way and she certainly has she regaining that that Lockett's championship has shown that she has come truly into her own and is comfortable with who she is and I think that's what really scares people so between her and my bone collector my demon I can only imagine what's going to happen when they finally get the opportunity to lock up with the chains off. It's definitely going to be very Wait. interesting to see. I think Look forward to seeing that someday. I think a lot of people in the RMP faithful are dying to see that unfold. That's for sure. Um, all right, guys. That's the show for tonight. We're going to raid over to Gritty Urban Saga from here. For all of us here on the Dudes and Belts Wrestling Chatcast, myself, Johnny Deathdrop, top left, Coast Crusader, right next to him, Marky Pins, bottom left, Sunday Night Savior, and Triple I on the bottom right, and of course, our special guest, the Prince of, of Denver, Ronan. Yeah.